Dr. Fingal, that was terrific. So I'm sure we've got plenty of questions that are going to come in, but I'm going to start with, with, um, with one straight off the bat. So 10 years from now, I'm an energy customer, consumer. All 50 of your recommendations have been implemented. Will I notice? What, what is new for me? What, what does the system look and feel like for me? As a so consumer? the way I've been saying it is, I'll make it tougher, three years from now, what will you notice mm -hmm. if the 50 recommendations have been implemented and effectively acted upon? The main thing you'll notice is that nobody will be talking about energy. <laughs> It'll be wonderful. <laughs> yeah. the um, 10 years from now, um, I would hope that the system, of course, is stable, is lower in emissions, but most important, the prices will have come down truly a lot. We will never. I haven't met anybody who expects that we'll go back to the ultra-low prices of the 1980s and the 1990s. It was a different world in so many respects, and everybody here understands that. But we are at very, very high prices. We are at global high prices here. And yet we've got, we're endowed with enormous uh, renewable resources and gas, mm. and there's no reason for us to be at those globally high, you know, highest prices um, in, in many parts of the world. And I think that we can get down to you know, very, very sensible yeah. prices again in the future. Yeah, great. Going to one of the sp specific recommendations here, somebody's asked, do you expect the security and reliability obligations to be required in states other than South Australia in the medium term? So we, um, for the security and the reliability obligations, or certainly for the reliability obligations, which is that every new generator, and typically think of wind and solar in this case, will have the ability to deliver electricity mm. when needed. Mm. And we specifically said that going forward, the national electricity market, uh, we have to acknowledge the regional differences. It is a national market. It is connected through interconnectors. It is connected through a single set of rules and a single operator and regulator and rule maker. But the requirements of the regions are different. Mm. So uh, clearly in South Australia, a new wind farm going in we recommended that AEMO, working with AMC, should make the decision of what the requirement would be. Clearly, that new wind farm going in would have a fairly high expectation on storage. And the storage doesn't have to be batteries. It can be uh, batteries, pumped hydro, you know, new pumped hydro, mm. or uh, it could actually be uh, ethanol or, or even uh, diesel or gas generation, but it's not being used mm. many hours of mm. the year. Uh, and it can be done through contracts with third parties as long as it's new energy that's being contracted. Um, so South Australia would have a relatively high level. But as the other states increase their percentage of variable renewable energies, every year or two, you'd expect AEMO and AMC to uh, reconsider what the requirements are. And so you're specifically saying, will they be high requirements? They have to be requirements that are taking into account future needs. You can't set those requirements for today, but that's yep. been a mistake that we've made in the past. Um, we're in a rapidly evolving market, and all of these things are there for decades. Yep. So you don't have to be extreme and look mm, at the requirement mm. 20 years from now, but AMO and AMC will have to make their own decisions mm. as to how far they look. So I would expect that as Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland start increasing their renewables, the generator reliability obligations and the security obligations will increase. Yeah. And just on some of the, um, the detail of the implementation of those obligations, we've sort of heard some pretty wild claims that for every megawatt of variable renewables, you need a megawatt of you know, fossil fuels back up. And then today we've seen others talking about quite a small sort of firming cost associated with, with, with renewables. How do you see that actually playing out and being implemented? So. We squibbed, right? We, we left, <laughs> we left I'm it. I'm putting you on the spot. Here. We left it to the experts. So we think that AMO and AMC can do the analysis. They can work with academic institutes. We've got some fabulous academic research institutes that understand and can mo understand power systems and can mm. model it. AMO themselves have capability in doing that, but it's the sort of thing you want a second opinion. Yeah. And they have to work it out. The wisdom that I see out there. Uh, is that at low rates of penetration, that ratio is pretty, pretty yeah. small. Mm. You don't need a lot of megawatt capacity per megawatt yeah. uh, in order to achieve the stability that you need. Yeah. But it goes up and up and up. Yes. So 
for the problems that we've had recently, if you go back to February of this year where we had outages in South Australia and outages in New South Wales, they all happened around 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon mm. um, after a series of extremely hot days. During those hot days, the thermal generating capacity starts to derate. You know, when they're really hot, the coal and gas generators don't work as well as uh, at full nameplate capacity. Uh, some of them even, God forbid, break down. And around about 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, um, even though there's, you know, the sun's still high, mm. <clears throat> because all the rooftop solar is pointing north and the sun is sort of getting low yeah, to the yeah. the west, the output drops off dramatically. And despite the geographical spread between South Australia and Victoria and New South Wales, during those hot weather patterns, you tend to lose all the wind across South Australia and Victoria on the same days at yeah. the same time. And you saw virtually no wind. So if, the, if all the existing wind in February had 10% storage capacity mm. for four hours, we would not have had a problem. Yeah. And those were rather severe days. Yeah. It, it also, there's a, there's a question here uh, that <coughs> refers to the CSIRO's low emissions technology roadmap, which is really around and sort of complements what you've just been talking about. Another resource that's out there is on the demand side, and, and, and Audrey spoke about this a little bit earlier as well. What in your recommendations or in the conversations that you were having um, in preparing the report do you think is the way that we can kind of um, enable or, or access this huge resource on the demand side of the equation, not just on the supply? Exactly how we do it is, is an unfolding story, and that's why it's wonderful to see ARENA and AEMO working on this trial. Every country is different, and mm -hmm. what's worked in America won't necessarily work here. And if you don't put your foot in the water, yeah. you'll never know what the temperature is. Yeah. So by doing the trial, we will discover what we can achieve. Um, I, I think demand side management is an extraordinarily important part mm. of a diverse portfolio of solutions. Uh, I'm not optimistic that it's going to make 30% or 40% mm -hmm. differences, but you know, 5% and 10% difference can be transformational yeah. in terms of cost mm. when your alternatives are um, investing in emergency reserves and other things. But we also recommend beyond demand side management, which is very, very important and virtually untested in this country, but well tested in other countries, mm. uh, we also recommended that <clears throat> there has to be consideration to strategic reserves. Mm. But most important, you have to have a market into which investors want to invest, a market into which they're not only willing to invest in the generation, but willing to invest in the storage capability that will go hand in hand with their generation into providing the kind of generation package that we want. I will point out that I don't think anything's easy. Um, I'm very optimistic that we can achieve a lowish cost, mm. highly reliable, lower, an ever lower emissions supply. But despite hearing the wonderful presentations here today, um, we're really focused here today on technology, but that technology has got to play in a market. Yep. Uh, in a social milieu, mm. in a political milieu, and all of those things confound the delivery of the solutions. So the more we can stabilise what's currently causing unrest, mm. the more the Energy Security Board, working with Coag Energy Council, working with the uh, energy market bodies, can try to bring these new technological solutions, a diverse mm. uh, array of technological solutions on board. But it's never going to be as easy as any of us think. But nor is it going to be as hard as many people think. Yeah. It's going to be realistic. Terrific. I think on that note, we will finish. So everyone, please join me in thanking Dr. Finkel. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.